Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is truly incredible. We're actually gonna be doing an unboxing right now. Uh, give me one second. It helps if I bring the actual box. So I've been waiting for uh, these mm -hmm. animals for a long time. Something I used to work with years ago and I just broke my knife. Okay, now I fixed my knife. So uh, I worked with these animals years ago, but it's probably been about a decade since I've had them. And it's just been on my wish list forever. And I don't know why I never got them. But fortunately, I was scrolling through Instagram the other night and uh, uh, Instagram account Exotic Fire Hognose posted these and said they were available. And I was like, are you kidding me? And the truth is, they actually were a little bit more spectacular than even the ones I used to work with. And uh, by the way, uh, Exotic Fire Hogs, thank you so much. I appreciate this. Uh, definitely shout out to them. And oh my gosh, these are so much more beautiful. You gotta remember 10 years ago, a totally different thing. They've now been refined and uh, let me see what's going on. So they're packed really good by the way. And what's interesting is, uh, I, there's four little tubs right here, and I thought I was only getting three, so I don't know if he sent me a gift or he made a mistake. I'll contact him, but regardless, let's take a look. This is such a cute way to pack things. I tell you, I, I'm, I'm impressed. The packing job was amazing. Uh, the stickers are amazing. Uh, just a, obviously great company here. So these are, of course, little hognose snakes, but there's something a little bit different about these hognose snakes. They're not like Western hognose snakes that I work with. These are tri-colored hognose snakes. And these ones are like a zigzaggedy one. And by the way, uh, I just looked on this one and it said M8 turned into a female. So we sent you a free male Jag. So they actually call these Jags that have that interesting jaggy pattern to them. Now, typically these guys will have more banding. So it almost looks like you cross a milk snake into a hognose snake. But the truth is these are from South America and they are just such an amazing animal. I am over the top excited about having these guys. They are incredible. And they are, you know, a lot like a Western hognose in some sense, but in other sense, they're completely different. I can't wait to see the other ones. Oh my gosh, these things are gorgeous. When I used to work with these and breed these, they were much more dark. They weren't as pretty. Now they've refined them to clean them up. And obviously the jag pattern is something completely different. That is amazing. And these guys are cool. Now, interestingly enough, these guys get, you know, about the size of a hog nose, you know, typically two foot, maybe sometimes 30 inches or something like that. But uh, they don't get really large, but just like the Western hog nose snakes, the males will stay a little bit smaller than the females and they are so incredible. Typically they'll take frozen rodents right off the bat when they're captive bred. Now, now when the original ones were coming in back in like the early 2000s, late 90s, the wild ones did terrible, typically never really survived. But the captive ones have really thrived over the last couple decades. And now uh, they're, they're amazing animals. Weirdly enough, I don't know why you don't see more of them available. Maybe because every time they're available, people just keep buying them up. And oh my God, look at the jag on that one. Whoo, that's a crazy almost jigsaw pattern. And I guess this jigsaw pattern actually breeds true. I don't know if it's polygenic or if it's like an incomplete dominant. I'm not 100% sure. I'll find out more about that. But nevertheless, when I had the opportunity to grab these guys, I just had to do it because I just was so blown away. I mean, isn't that incredible? And again, these are a South American hognose snake, not even the same genus as the Western hognose snake, but they still have that little pug nose. These guys kind of live fast and don't live long, unfortunately. Typically, these guys will live anywhere from like seven to eight years, that's about it. What's interesting about them though is they're high production animals. So whereas a Western hog nose will have two clutches on the rare occasion, three clutches a year, believe it or not, these guys can sustain about four to six clutches per year. And occasionally, if you really push hard, you can get them to eight clutches a year. I wouldn't suggest that because typically when you breed them that much, the females just can't rebound a lot. But they will literally have, you know, five to 10 eggs and they'll produce four, five, six, seven clutches in a year. Year. absolutely incredible again not sure why you don't see more of these around because again 15 18 years ago you were seeing a lot of them and then they just kind of disappeared so it's great that exotic fire is working with these guys producing such amazing animals and I couldn't be more excited to be able to have these back in the collection and they'll get up to size to breed in typically 18 months so within two years hopefully I'll start producing these true little beauties like this let me know what you guys think I mean have you ever seen a tricolored hog nose before and if you have what do you think about them I tell you what I am so excited to see these guys get back into the program this is so absolutely incredible so uh that is the unboxing for the day it real good okay hey guys so today we are with the baby frillies 
They are about seven months old now. Usually they eat little baby uh, roaches, and today we are gonna try to see if they can eat some superworms. They actually can't digest mealworms properly. That's why we usually do the roaches, but today we're gonna give superworms a try. So obviously that was super cute and a little ridiculous. They're all over the place, super excited about food all the time. And this was something new for them and actually the first time that they've eaten off tongs. Um, two of them took them, which I'm super happy about. And we'll see how the rest do eventually. Just a quick update on Heinz, the crimson albino iguana. Look at how much his tail has grown in just a matter of a couple weeks. Of course it broke off and then ended up falling off, but look at how much it's growing in and it's just a chunky little monkey too, but I couldn't be more happy with the progress. Definitely makes me believe that it's gonna have a full tail here in just probably another six months or so. I was so bummed when it lost its tail, but uh, as it's turning out, it's looking pretty darn cool. Hey Laura, can I show you what we got today? Did you know we got something? What are you talking about? Maybe I didn't even tell you about these. Oops. Uh, I'm going to have to ask forgiveness for this one. Come, come see this. Yeah, check it out. Check these out. Oh, cute tubs. I know they're cute, <laughs> right? They're super cute. It's been so long since we've had these. Oh, yeah. That's right. You were talking about these. <sighs> What do you oh, think? Oh yeah. You see how they, they actually call these jags because they have like the, the kind of jaggy pattern. Okay, so that's genetic? Yeah, I don't know if it's polymorphic or what it is. I'll reach out to these guys. And, it reminds uh, but, me a bit of those Sinaloans we had back yeah, in the day. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, those zipper Sinaloans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those were super cool. Well, they're super cute, and you know, I do like Hognose, so I, I guess this is okay. And what was really cool was we actually, we bought a trio, mm -hmm. but uh, apparently one of the females that he went to pack was a male, so he still sent us uh, the t two other females, but a different female, and he sent us a free male. So we have two pair. Oh, perfect. That I was prefer, awesome. Yeah, I prefer it that yeah, way. Yeah, that way we're Cover not relying on what, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> aren't they amazing? Yes. It's cool. It's been, gosh, what, 10 years since we've had these? Probably at least. At least, yeah. So that's awesome. So uh, awesome. So get these breeding by next week, okay? <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> the other day we actually gave away a poster of the mural of the birthday party room. Well, guess what? Today I want to give a reptarium beanie away. Again, just in the comments, tell me why you want this. I'll pick one of you guys. I know you guys are all want it, and I wish I could send them to all of them. I'm going to pick one person this time, and I'll just keep doing giveaways maybe every couple days during this just to keep us all excited. But uh, uh, good luck, and uh, hopefully you'll get a beanie. Continuation of the python egg season. We're just going to go ahead and pull this down. And this is actually a children's python, and look at that is a classic wrapping. Oh my gosh, that looks so cool. Look at you. Good job, mom. Look at those pearly whites right there. Oh my gosh. That's what snake breeders live for right there. Just seeing a mom wrapped around a beautiful pearly white clutch of eggs. And of course, this is a little children's python. Those little dwarf Australian pythons. Unbelievable. It looks like a beautiful clutch too. Whoo! Man, that thing looks incredible. Look at this. Oh my gosh, that's okay, mom. And I understand some people feel a little bit bad that we take the eggs away when the moms are doing such a great job of kind of protecting them. But again, it's good for the mom to take away. Number one, we can artificially incubate the eggs, which is just gonna give us a little bit higher hatch rate. Also, we can get this female back onto food. We'll wash her up, get her entire enclosure cleaned up, and hopefully she'll be back onto food within the next week or so. Whereas if she was wrapped around those eggs, she's gonna stay around those eggs for up to two months. That's without food. Every now and then they'll climb off maybe to get a drink of water, but that's it. But it really does beat them up to be on those eggs for two months, right? So if we can get her off of the eggs now, artificially incubate the eggs, and then just go ahead and get her back onto food, it's just gonna be better for her health, and we get a higher ratio of hatch rate typically when we artificially incubate. So nevertheless, we have two 
four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 eggs. Interestingly enough, we had the first clutch was 14 eggs, second clutch was 12 eggs, and now we've got 14 <laughs> eggs, all from children's python. So, hey, the season is getting going. Uh, there is a lot of eggs to come. I can promise you this is gonna be one of the biggest and most abundant years of eggs that we've had in a long, long time. Today is a little bit of a change of scenery for me. I'm, uh, I'm helping out over at BHB. Definitely have some of these beautiful, beautiful mangroves like you guys are here, and they're one of my favorite snakes here. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, since the moment Brian got these, I had been absolutely in love. Like, I've always wanted a couple myself. I, I, you know, I've got a lot of my own venomous and hots at home that I, that I really, really love and enjoy it. But I mean, this is a certainly a pinnacle, pinnacle snake. I mean, look at her. She is definitely, she's what we call a rear fang snake. Um, I think if I remember correctly, the actual zoological term is opisthoglyphus. Just like a hog nose, just like any other thing. This and, and uh, they have these rear fangs and they get, so, it, so these guys actually, when they bite you, they don't necessarily inject venom every time they bite you. They actually have to chew. You get bit enough by an animal like this, you can develop an allergy. Uh, and that has been a warning I've been told on a number of occasions by, by quite a few like much more professionals than I. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for a first timer, but I, I would recommend it for anybody that's wanting into some weird, weird, cool stuff. And these, man, boy, you got any kind, but Jesus, look at that color. She is beautiful. Golly. <laughs> It's springtime at the Reptarium, and we have some dandelions outside. We are going to give them to our bearded dragons and see how they like them. This boy is still trying to breed right now. Not quite hooked up. And that's actually a spider super stripe. Right to his pinstripe, that is actually a specter too. So we could produce some super stripe spinner ball pythons. Uh, still lots of cool breeding going on. We're wrapping up the season a little bit, but every time we put males in, they lock up right away, which tells me that the females are real receptive and the males are still doing really well. And we should have the next clutch of ball pythons any day. Lucy is looking so amazing. I tell you what, after that big meal, she looks absolutely stunning. I hope that you guys enjoyed Enjoyed today and oh by the way if you haven't gotten sick of me yet here's an entire playlist of feeding reptiles I know you guys like that up here uh, you can listen to my podcast called checking in uh, I, I hope that you'll like that we do that two three times a week on this side you can subscribe to the vlog channel I surely do appreciate you so much have an absolutely wonderful day uh, remember things are gonna get better and things are gonna be awesome soon guys be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow